the nitty gritty of the, of, the, of the talk, I have a quick question. Um, you can all see the picture, right? Um, what's in the picture? Spices. Um, they say Christopher Columbus traveled to the Americas looking for spices. spices. Why, would, why, was he going, why was he looking for spices in the first place? Why would he take that death risking journey to get to the Americas to find spices? Can anyone help me with an answer? Okay. For the, as a history lesson, for those who don't know, spice at the time was actually the, most, the biggest industry in the world at the time. At that time, it was worth over $400 billion in the global economy. Right? So people were going all around looking to, the, to India, to the Indonesian islands and the like to kind of find these spices. Why? Because spices were very important to preserve food, to change the taste of food if when food goes off. Right? But as an industry, people, they were not even aware of what was taking place. So this industry was thriving for quite a long time and in the space of 10 years, the entire industry collapsed. Ice completely, completely destroyed decimated the spice industry, right? At the time, in 1956, just 50 years ago, you needed, about, you, needed, you needed about six people to carry that device, and it cost about $120,000. In the space of 40 years' time, we have that. It went from being able to have literally um, five megabytes all the way to 128 gigabytes in the space of 40 years at a thousand times the cost reduction of it. Now we're at a point where we, we can get a memory card for, for one, a one terabyte memory card for $99 compared to where it was before. That's a trillion times fold improvement in computational power globally for this technology alone. Why is this important? It's important because right now we live in a world where things are changing enormously fast. Right? The world we have right now is going to be very unrecognizable in the next five, ten years. You see that over time, when it comes to all the innovations we have in the world, from airplanes, mobile phones, to fridges, to color television, to all these things, all happen in the span of less than 150 years. And all that innovation we saw in that era, in that time, we're going to see that in the next five, ten years' time, at ten times the capacity of that. Why is that important? If so, it is important because if you are an entrepreneur or an innovator, for example, before to start a tech company would cost you about $5 million in, two, in the year 2000. Now you can now, actually in 2011, you could, st you could start a company, a tech company for $5,000. Now, how much do you think it is right now in 2018? You can start a thriving and booming tech company for less than $500, even less than that. That even applies to corporations who are trying to innovate within their, within their company how can you leverage technology into this company effectively at a lower cost element? This is, my, this is one of my favorite slides, right? It says to get a video conferencing costs you about $23,000, GPS $119,000, a watch, digital watch to um, a music library was phenomenally expensive. Right now you can get about $900,000 worth of all these devices and technology all in your... Let me get the thing right. Let me get it right and your phone. So right now you're carrying about $900,000 worth of innovation right here, right? <laughs> and that's just a great picture to showcase how much that's changed in just in the span of, 20, in the span of 10 years' time. So you're going to see even more evolve innovation in the coming years' time as well. Who remembers Kodak? <laughs> right. Kodak was such a big company that, you know, the famous phrase was what? The Kodak moment, right? Kodak, did you know Kodak invented the digital camera? In the year 2014, Kodak went from being a company with 140,000 employees with $28 billion market cap to becoming bankrupt in 2014. In that same year, Instagram, leveraging digital photography, got valued at $1 billion with only 13 employees. That's the kind of world we're living in right now. The kind of world where you can, people out there can come together and innovate and form phenomenally growing companies. And the kind of world where even companies like Google can create a little silo of team to build enormous innovations. It's going to get a bit more in-depth right now. They say retailers dying completely, right? The music industry, what happened to our CDs? People just download music nowadays all the time. Right now, the biggest hotel company in the world doesn't have any hotels. The biggest taxi company in the world doesn't have any taxis. 
and soon the biggest banks or the biggest commercial banks in the world are not going to have any branches. Why is that? We see it in our everyday life on a 24-hour basis because who remembers that time when you used to go, to, you're in the UK trying to call a family member in Ghana and vice versa. You have to go and buy those, those safari cars. You know, you know those cars, right? You get, you get your, your coin, you scratch it, dial 08 something something, and then it's like, <laughs> do you even remember that? That was only a few years ago. Now WhatsApp completely changed all of that and we take it completely for granted. That's how subtle these innovations and changes are being right now in our world. And soon, imagine what's going to be coming next, right? I'm working on a book called Singularity Africa, which will be released in December. Um, and it talks about the fact that Africa is poised to become the next frontier region in the world because we have the capacity to leapfrog innovation by leveraging these technologies all around the world. Why is that? Simply put, besides the beautiful people on the continent, simply put, because we have the youngest population in there, we have the largest working force, we're, we're going to have the largest working force in the next 30 years. It says that between now and the next 30 years, we're going to need a city the size of New York every six months across the continent. That's how significant these changes are happening on, on the continent right now. And we see that even more importantly with um, even our mobile phones. Africa completely leapfrogged that telecoms step of having these wiring and pylons all around the city straight to, straight to digital phones and smartphones, right? So given that I said all these things, right, how does it apply to you? Simply put, I'll start with myself. I studied not too long ago at the London School of Economics. And at the time, I was a student, and I used to trade on the currency market and stock market on my phone. I made about $40,000 on my phone, just trading on my phone right now. As a father and a family man in our home in New York, actually, we actually Airbnb the home when we're not there on my phone. With my businesses and my teams, we have, I have remote teams all around the world, and I help communicate with them via WhatsApp, via HubSpot, and all these other innovations around the world, all on my phone. I outsource services to platforms like Fiverr and get the top tech talent, top tier talent, for phenomenal lower amounts of cost, again, on my phone. So when I speak to people about these crazy innovations like, you know, um, blockchain, AI, and the like, people get very intimidated. But why? All of us have a phone. So yeah, just a little bit about myself. So my name is Einstein and Tim. I actually went to primary school in Ghana, Jack and Jill. I um, studied, I, I grew up in South London for all my South Londoners in the house. <laughs> <Woo>. <laughs> I love my South London massive, fantastic. Um, from there, I actually went to London School of Economics, did a traditional thing where I got into investment banking, working at UBS, Deutsche Bank, State Street and the like. Traveled to around different parts of the world, actually building, working for supranational companies in India and in China. And in my travels, I got to see that the world is changing. There's something happening right now that we are unaware of, like, you know, unemployment and issues are taking place. And that took me to NASA in Silicon Valley, where I learned about exponential technologies like blockchain and AI and the like. And from that, I built a few tech companies over there, ventured back and got support. And I was one of the few Ghanaians there doing that. And from there, we, the whole onus was, how can we take that mindset of innovation and investing and supporting real innovation into the continent because we are poised to really transform and leapfrog that process. And that's taking me to where I am right now, where we found the Ghana Tech Summit to bring the ecosystem together, where I'm working with Tim Draper on his venture networks to invest in companies who are doing enormous and great things, right? So given that, I, every time I look at this picture, it annoys me, right? How can it, the hopeless continent? <laughs> Come on. But at least the global mindset about the continent has changed. We've gone from being perceived as the hopeless continent to being the rising continent, right? And why is that? It's not because of oil and gas, which has always been there. It's not because of properties to my uncles out there who, like, I'm sorry, uncle, I've got to call you. It's not, about, it's not because of property. It's not because of um, mining the minerals. Why is it a rising continent? Purely because of what? Innovation and technology. Because we are adopting innovation technology on the continent. And why is that? A good example is M-Pesa of Kenya. 
Impetsi started as a small company that gained support to get to a platform, to get to the, the, the point where now they actually have the 11% of the Kenyan GDP coming through that platform alone. And it still is in, in its infancy. Google opened an AI center in Ghana. Let's talk about the Kofi Annan Center, which does a wireframe testing all around the continent. These are the things that's happening on the continent that is going to help us leapfrog and become truly a risen continent. And I showcased that even more with um, the Ghana Tech Summit that we had, where we had about 100 global speakers, 1,000 attendees all in one place, and talking about how can we really bring the ecosystem together and help pinpoint Ghana as an innovation hub of the continent. Right? So why is... Now that we've gone through that, let's get into the nitty gritty of things, right? We know about mobile money, which has been helped by phone penetration, right? That has helped improve remittance, right? It's helped make credit more available. But these are some things that as, as a community and as an ecosystem over here, we've got to think about how can we get into making more credit available? How can we have better credit reference agencies? How can we improve human people's identity so we can actually and correspond and interact and follow up with investment that's taking place? How can we be better create lines of credit around the, con around the country and the continent? How can we offer small loans to help support people in that way? One of the key companies I've seen that's done that really well is Orange. And who remembers Orange? Or Orange is like a SIM card company like T-Mobile, right? Orange is a French company that went to, they were, it was actually, it was dying at the time, and they went to Sierra Leone and Cote d'Ivoire, and they started a mobile money company, and now Orange is actually one of the biggest telecoms company in the world, again. It should, have been a, it should have been an African company doing that. It should have been one of us in the room doing that. The basic layer, we talk about fintech, it starts with the mobile money sort of thing that we get into blockchain. Who here is familiar with blockchain and cryptocurrency? Okay, if you want to, I can't go a bit too in depth right now, but if you want to follow up and get me more information about that, come chat with me afterwards, right? We, moving away from just a focus on minerals and, um, and minerals and gas and the like, which is all fantastic, to more about innovation. How can we bring crowdfunding into the continent. MTN did a great job in Ghana where they raised, they did a crowd equity platform where they raised money or mobile money for, to help do an IPO over MTN. Who remembers that one in Ghana this, this July? It's a fantastic move. We can have more of that sort of thing taking place by individuals doing that. How can we get to a point where we can have more mergers and acquisitions? If we have these, and PESA happened because Safaricom took that on board and made that grow. How can we have some of the bigger players acquire some of the smaller players so we can actually have that type of incredible growth and transition that we need. How can we have more IPOs? How can we have the stock exchange doing more valuations in our companies over there? All right. right now, we're only sticking to a certain type of models on the continent. But we need to evolve from that and actually help support some of the, the up and rising incumbents and actually innovate a bit more better when it comes to in the technology. And the point right now is that People always assume that the issue on the continent or in Ghana and the like is money, right? It's not money. The reason why Silicon Valley works is because there's an ecosystem there. Tim Draper, who's a billionaire, my billionaire partner to invest in these companies, understands that, right? That's why we're looking to try and find out ways we can help bring more players together to think properly about technology innovation, have more local leaders get involved in the right way. It's not right that we can only have a fund where most of my partners are going to be from Silicon Valley or Germany and the like. We need to have more people on the continent, in the region, players coming involved in that way. And as I come bring this thing to a close, when we talk about innovation and technology and transforming things, it gets very intimidating for a lot of people, right? But can everyone see the picture? What's in that picture? <laughs> Pardon? Horses and... I know right now we're in Knightsbridge, right? And I love Knightsbridge. I used, to, I, used to, <laughs> I used to walk around that McLaren shop and, you know, I, I love this area very much. But it, that is the street of London, right? At the time, London streets were completely covered in poop, right? Completely covered. It was so bad that they said that in the next 50 years, every street of London will be buried under nine feet of manure. That's how bad it was. In the space of 10, less than 10 years, all of that changed completely. For those who are just very, very inundated with how, London, how beautiful London is right now, space of tennis, that changed completely. And what changed that? Pardon? Thank you. Cars. Cars changed all of that. We can have that kind of transformation change in our regions if we truly think appropriately about technology in the right way. And Ghana can actually be a leader for that process, right? 
We have already set the pace by being the leader when he came to in the 1957 and helping take Af helping Africa take that onus in that step, right? A Ghanaian discovered fiber optics, right? How do we not have how 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 have we, how have we not mastered that process in the country right now, right? Already we talk about raising money from here, here, and there, and I can't talk. I've raised money from all around the world to invest in the company, but you need to only look at the churches around the country to see that we have enough. We are enough. There's enough things in the country and the continent to support ourselves and truly get to that next step of innovation, right? And as I said, right now, I'm raising a fund with my part with the partner Tim, and we're actually going to be investing in tech companies all around the co around the continent, and. The idea is that we need local players, local leaders to come involved in that and think properly about technology because the only way we can go from where we are right now to that next step of being a leader in the globe is through technology and innovation. So please, let's, you know, just come chat with me, let's talk about it and let's think properly about technology. Thank you very much.